Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India So for an adiabatic flame uh, we have the unburnt enthalpy uh, should be equal to the burnt enthalpy uh, which means we could now say sigma k equals 1 to n um, yk comma u times um, hk u equal to sigma k equals 1 to n ykb hkb where hkb is now the enthalpy of the burnt products ykb is something that we have seen so far so what what we then do is uh, the normal thing which is uh, we now say enthalpy is formation enthalpy plus sensible enthalpy right so using heats of formation and uh, sensible enthalpies enthalpies um, we can write sigma k equals 1 to n um, yk u minus yk b times delta h of k naught which is the reference formation enthalpy for each species equal to now we look at the sensible enthalpy which is T ref to T uh, TB that is um, CP CPB DT minus integral T ref to TU CPU DT right our job is to actually find out TB given to you okay that is what we are trying to do. So, where of course uh, CPB is equal to sigma k equals 1 to n ykb CP CPK of temperature and uh, CPU is um, sigma k equals 1 to n yk u cpk of t now so what we what we want to do is we want to try to find out um, what what this is right and uh, therefore uh, and then we have already looked at how to do the products therefore uh, we can do the same thing so we had um, dyk divided by nu k double prime minus nu k single prime times capital W k equals for over many species uh, to let us say one particular species, species d y 1 divided by nu 1 double prime minus nu 1 single prime times capital W 1. So integrating this integrating this we get um, yku minus ykb equal to equals so let us suppose that you do this for the kth species in relation to the fuel so that means you take any kth species and then you take fuel on the left hand side and right hand side respectively then you could you could write this as yfu minus yfb times um, nu k double prime minus nu k single prime wk divided by nu f wf now keep in mind your nu f here is actually the stoichiometric coefficient for the fuel and 
you do not have any fuel on the right hand side therefore your nu k double prime minus nu k single prime for the fuel is simply nu f right so you do not have to worry about that anymore because you know how the reaction looks like for this. So from here if you know this difference now for the k species multiplying by delta h of k and summing, summing over all k sigma k equals 1 to n um, yk u minus yk b times delta h of k not is equal to then you see the only thing that is really getting summed over uh, on the right hand side is this part all right and uh, this all this is independent of k it is only for the fuel therefore y, yf u minus yf b divided by nu f wf times sigma k equals 1 to n nu k w k delta h of k naught where uh, we now use the symbol where of course it is going to get a little bit bigger so we try to compress it by saying nu k is nu k double prime minus nu k single prime um, just to uh, just to kind of have our bearings on when we say nu k is equal to nu k double prime minus nu k single prime that is like a set that you are trying to allocate a particular symbol but we have also looked at the nu without a subscript which is a stoichiometric uh, stoichiometric ratio mass ratio and nu f is actually the stoichiometric coefficient for fuel that is already been identified which is basically this one evaluated already right. So uh, these are these are the different nu's that we are, uh, we are looking at so just, just do not get confused about these things uh, all right so if you now look at this then the the uh, the left hand side um, here is what this is effectively what it means is this essentially translates to just looking at this summation all right and uh, therefore if you now say that summation if it is uh, q let let uh, uh, so we can we can now uh, define heat of combustion. heat of combustion q equal to negative k equals 1 to n nu k w k delta h of k not all right let us just see heat or the other way you can do is you can also say negative sigma k equals 1 to n nu k delta capital H of k naught where this is on a molar basis this is on a mass basis so mass basis multiplied by the the, the molecular weight uh, is what you are looking at there. So, um, so for, uh, for simplicity uh, let, 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 uh, let us now say T, uh, Tu equals T ref. Now we have, we have already gone through this before in the context of premix flames but it does not really lose much generality here by doing this um, and, uh, and also assume constant Cp constant Cp therefore uh, now for a lean mixture. For a lean mixture, uh, when y of b equal to zero, right? That means you're running out of the burnt fuel because you don't have any of it as an excess. As a, a, for a lean mixture, then uh, all you do is uh, uh, you now say here, y just plug in y of b equal to zero here, right? That's what you would actually do for the left hand side. On the right hand side. This is simply um, Cp times uh, Cp times Tb minus Tu, effectively, right? 
so that means the CP can come to the other side in the denominator and then you will get uh, TB minus TU equal to Q YFU divided by CP nu F WF okay now it is not for nothing that we chose to actually look at fuel as one of the uh, sides of this equation. So in this equation we chose one of them to be fuel with the other one being any k species on the left hand side because we are looking at a lean mixture where you are going to substitute y of b equal to 0 but for a rich mixture you would want to actually substitute y o 2 b equal to 0 right which means we need to have a place in which we can substitute y o 2 b equal to 0 for which we should have started out having oxidizer integrated rather than fuel right so that is what we would do um, for, a rich, for a rich mixture we go back and integrate again as YKU minus YKB trying to redo this again with oxidizer on the right hand side instead of fuel so YKB minus YKU equal to YO2 U minus um, Y so this must be Y O2 U minus Y O2 B divided by um, new O new O2 W O2 times um, uh, times new K W K divided by yeah that is it. I will rewrote this. So nu k of course is again nu k double prime minus nu k single prime which I had not done before. So if you do this um, and uh, of course you now can take this step where you multiply by delta h of k and sum over and then you now recognize this as q and uh, plug this back in here and uh, write your tb minus tu at that stage you now plug your y o 2 b equal to 0 right for the rich mixture and uh, plug yo 2 b equal to 0 for rich mixture right T b minus T u is equal to q y o 2 u divided by CP nu O2 W O2 now what we are really looking for is the burnt temperature in terms of the mixture fraction Z because mixture fraction is kind of like our basic function now so uh, we want to now represent this in terms of uh, sorry YFU in terms of Z and YO2 uh, U in terms of Z which is not very difficult okay so you can say that this is basically uh, Z times y, um, YF comma 1 and this is 1 minus Z times uh, YO2 comma 2 right so we know how to do that so uh, so we we now write YF U and YO2 U uh, in the above expressions in terms of uh, Z the mixture fraction then uh, right also the unburned temperature temperature in terms of mixture fraction.
how does that work out you have T u of z equal to T 2 minus z times T 2 minus T 1 right how do I know that this is right T 2 is the oxidizer of stream temperature and T 1 is the fuel stream temperature right so if I now plug z equal to 0 then it is all oxidizer then I get the unburnt temperature for the oxidizer stream to be T 2 that is what this is if z is equal to 1 then it is the fuel stream right then the T 2 gets cancelled and you get T 1 for the unburnt temperature so that is the temperature of the fuel stream. So this is basically like a linear relationship between the two temperatures for the unburnt temperature of a mixture of any given mixture fraction in between right. So if with that being the case um, you now go back and plug that in terms of Z and then plug your Y of U in terms of Z and Y O2 in terms of Z right. So all of them put in, put in terms of Z will be then Tb of Z equal to T U of Z plus Q Y F comma one divided by C P nu F W F times Z uh, with Z much mean less than or equal to Z stoichiometric or T B of Z equals T U of Z plus Q Y O two comma two divided by C P new O two W O two times one minus Z for Z greater than or equal to Z is T right now the maximum temperature you can calculate the maximum temperature so that Z keeps on increasing you see T B will keep on increasing up to Z is T and when you now cross Z is T you now have to use this expression where as the Z keeps on increasing T, T B keeps on decreasing right and at Z equal to Z is T you should actually get the same expression from both that means you should have like one temperature at which the, uh, the, the stoichiometric mixture uh, has a burn temperature. So the maximum temperature and that will be the maximum temperature the max temperature TST is calculated for uh, Z is T from either expression from either expression above. So um, how does this look like now we have been drawing these pictures at uh, uh, every, every now and then as, in, as and when we get a bunch of expressions or in, in, in terms of Z. Um, we try to plot them so here you see if Z uh, is plotted along the horizontal axis um, and let us say you go from 0 to 1 uh, all oxidizer stream here and all fuel stream there um, and let us say the oxidizer temperature is uh, T2 mm -hmm. and uh, the fuel temperature let us say is T1 the unburned temperature is not going to depend on whether you had a stoichiometric surface and so on okay whatever it may be uh, you just get a straight line that connects the two which is basically following this expression that is a linear expression in Z as well okay and uh, you just get a straight line that connects these two this is T U as far as burnt temperature is concerned you have to now worry about whether your uh, or fuel rich or fuel lean right and that means you have to look at where your ZST will be so if your ZST is going to be uh, 
here then the TST is going to be the peak and on the one side when you are now having only oxidizer you, you, you do not have any reactions you are simply not having any fuel at all so you go back to T2 right and similarly uh, on the other side you just have to look at a linear uh, variation from TST to T1 so it, it, it just becomes that, that simple all right so in some sense what this really means is we, we can now put the whole picture together uh, in, in what we are doing in a, in a uh, bigger, bigger graph uh, let us just try to do that now need more space so let us now say we had a unburned uh, situation and a mixing field in which you have the Z varying along the uh, horizontal axis going from 0 to 1 all oxidizer to all fuel right and uh, we now want to look at how this proceeds in a third axis where we are interested in constructing uh, the same kind of picture for the burnt uh, process so let us suppose that that is what it is right and along along the, the this third axis we now um, have a variable called reactedness what is the level of reaction that is going on how do you monitor this by looking at yf minus yfu divided by yfb minus yfu so when you started out all right when you started out you have yf is equal to yfu so r is equal to 0 okay when you end yf becomes yfb therefore r becomes 1 all right so we can we can plot this along this axis um, maybe uh, let us say along this axis maybe maybe just plot along this right that is that is the way the reaction is going all right and and why uh, yf yf is turning into uh, turning on turning from yfb yfu to yfb initially we are having your uh, yfu actually starting starting from let us say yf1 here to uh, 0 on this side and therefore uh, you are going to have a straight line that looks like this so this is your yfu all right and uh, somewhere in here you are going to have your zst right and your yfb is going to be uh, so maybe maybe you can look at you don't have to worry about zst at all here you just to just to get a perspective on how this kind of a linearly increasing yfu actually turns out to start increasing up to yf1 over here right and uh, similarly you could think about a yo2u which starts from yo2 2 and goes all the way to 0 when z goes to 1 that is the unburnt oxidizer right and that now is going to go all the way to so this is also yo2 2 
and of course I should have marked y of 1 there right and then we, we could do a couple of things one let us assume that you have diluent only in the oxidizer like an air right so more the air more the oxygen and correspondingly more diluent if you do not have any air you do not have any oxygen you do not have any diluent either right so you could now think about a diluent concentration that is going to grow with more and more O2 as we go along backwards in this axis starting from 0 so so this is like y d u where d for d is for diluent right and this picture is not going to change at the end of the reaction it is about the same so you are now going to get this picture to look like y d u right and of course there is a value here that corresponds to how much diluent you have for how much oxygen so this could be for example 0.23 that could be like 0.77 and this could be now 0.77 all right okay and so on then we talked about temperatures oh no I think we talked about products so we, we talked about products we do not have any products here to talk about all right we are talking about products only here and uh, the way we talked about it is we now said you are going to have your y c o 2 b go like that and uh, y h 2 o b go like that all right. and finally we talked about temperature so the temperature we can plot two things the unburned temperature and the burn temperature right so the unburned temperature let's suppose would be we now pick a scale like that this is your t2 and this is your t1 it's as if like the fuel stream is colder than the oxidizer stream right could be and then you can mark these two points T2 here and uh, T1 there uh, maybe T1 is somewhere there according to this and uh, now going to go all the way to TST and go back here so if you think about it this is like what we were saying for the vicinity of the Berg-Schumann flame so in the Berg-Schumann flame if you have a diffusion flame sheet in the z axis it is going to be located at z equal to z as t right and from z equal to z as t the temperature is going to fall on either side on the fuel rich side one way and the oxidizer rich side the other way right but in the flame we are looking at how it is behaving in space rather than in the uh, space as in the physical space above the burner rather than looking at it in what is called as the mixed fraction space so in this picture everything looks very nice straight lines okay all linear dependences in the mixed fraction space but that is not how the curves were looking looking like in the physical space and that is one of the reasons why the mixed fraction space is quite valuable so question basically now is how do we transform this into or how do you utilize this in the physical space system that is what we are worried about like for example if somebody is giving you a burner and asking you to find out how the flame is going to look like and how the uh, species concentrations and the temperatures are going to vary and all those things you cannot give them a picture back like this which is in the mixed fraction space you have to now translate this into the physical space so you now look at how the mixture fraction for example 
can be uh, utilized um, in, in looking at the spatial variation that means we need to have a governing equation for how the mixture fraction varies in space that means we have to have an evolution equation for this uh, what I am going to now write is basically the steady state counterpart but there is nothing that really stops you from doing an unsteady counterpart just like how you would do an unsteady Schwab Zeldovich formulation which we did not go through but we said it is possible to do so. So similarly we can now uh, write for example a uh, a evolution equation for uh, the mixture fraction right. So the mixture fraction essentially is like a um, conserved scalar and it is now being evolved by convective and diffusive processes okay. Now that is the physics behind how, how this goes you can actually derive this mathematically in two different ways one go back to the definition of mixture fraction, mixture fraction is nothing but a um, fuel mass fraction kind of notion right. So you can now find that you have like a new yf minus yo2 divided by something or plus some plus new um, uh, yo2 2 divided by something. So the all the things that are getting added up and divided by are constants which depend on the inlet concentrations but what is really happening is you are now forming this coupling function like new f minus yo new yf minus yo2. If you now use the evolution equations for species concentration yf and yo2 and you now multiply it by new subtracted one from the other added something else divided by something some other constant and so on you should now be able to get this. And while you do that you can also find out that the right hand side being the um, reaction rate term is now going to go to is now going to get subtracted out pretty much like the way we did in the Berkshuman problem. So the Berkshuman problem we started looking at the Schwab Zeldovich species equation with the reaction rate on the uh, right hand side and we now try to normalize uh, things and subtract and form the coupling function such that you get the same expression on the right hand side you saw that when you subtract you get to get to 0. So you get, you get 0 here similarly. The other way of looking at it is while we were looking at the a mixture fraction we also noticed that we could form element mass fractions like for example Zc, Zh, Zo and so on and we could form our mixture fraction based on the uh, element mass fractions. So so long as the mixture fraction is essentially defined based on the element mass fractions and in a combustion process the chemical reaction that we are going through conserves elements it does not really destroy the elements. So no matter whether carbon is present in, in, a, in, the, in the hydrocarbon or carbon dioxide, no matter whether hydrogen is present in the hydrocarbon or water, no matter whether oxygen is present as itself or as part of or, or as part of carbon dioxide or water right the mixture fraction gets conserved because it is based on element mass fractions and therefore the reaction rate term will not show up when you now try to write, write a evolution equation for this. So uh, we just write this out as it is and then the other thing that we need to do in order to actually look at the structure of the frame. So this is okay as far as uh, the a infinite chemistry kind of approach is concerned. So what we, what we talked about in the Berkshuman problem was that this is like a sheet that corresponds to infinite chemistry and uh, on either side you have these things dropping and varying correspondingly but if you want to now think about finite rate chemistry okay. So if you are to think about finite rate chemistry you have to have the reaction rate show up somewhere and typically the problem with finite rate chemistry is the finite, con the finite chemical reaction depends on species concentrations as well as temperature right and in the schwab zeldovich formulation what we have noticed is we have to keep the reaction rate at least in one equation even while you are subtracting a lot of other things therefore if you now say um, let us let's now we have to consider the energy equation where the reaction rate depends on the temperature as well as react uh, concentrations and the concentration is governed by reactions sorry equations that have been subtracted from each other to get this okay. So this represents a, a pair of species reactions 
the species equations and uh, then we have the energy equation so if you now write this as uh, so this this is of course uh, before before we do that we can we can say this for for a simple case of uh, let's say the buck schumann kind of problem if you now say rho u do z divided by do x minus right or uh, if you want to do it in cylindrical polar this would be uh, like this and uh, 1 over r uh, and so on that is okay equal to 0. Um, now you could go ahead and solve this as it is and then finally look at the solution and find out wherever z is equal to z as t is where the flame shape is in terms of so you are now going to get finally uh, z of r comma z equal to z as t is the flame shape. right so you could go ahead and do do your solution that way and once you do this on either side in the in the in the uh, uh, burner let's say you have your flame like this this is your z equals z as t you can now get the solution to give other z values and so on that picture looks very good is not it right that is how it actually turns out to be you can solve the schwab zoldovich formulation and get this kind of picture and so these will correspond to different values of z with z equals z as t being where it is to correspond to where the flame is and then you can now look at for different values of z what should be your yfb what should be your yf uh, y o2b what should be your tb and so on all right. So, you, you, you could you could do this but that is actually the infinite rate chemistry approach. Now for the finite rate chemistry approach as I said you need to have at least one equation which, which contains the reaction rate that means you have to have uh, the energy equation let us say minus um, 1 over r dou by dou r r rho d dou t by dou r right equal to 1 over cp sigma k equals 1 to n delta h of k naught wk this is directly coming from our schwab zeldovich energy equation right. Now what we have to do next and I am not going to do this uh, in great detail I am just going to point to directions that that will take you there because this, this is just getting a bit too involved and I think the idea is essentially made and we could leave it there. So what you now do is transform the equations with respect to z that means we could say let one of the variables let us say z here equal to z which is the mixture fraction and uh, let us say r is equal to z1. So no big change there just changing symbols but here we are actually changing meanings okay and this is kind of like what is called as a Croco transformation where you are replacing one of the independent variables by a dependent variable upon which you want other dependent variables to depend. So in all that we have seen so far 
all the dependent variables that you are talking about are depending upon z and z itself is governed by this given that it is depending on x and uh, sorry z and r right. So once you know how z depends on uh, the spatial variables we now transform our equation in terms of z, capital Z being the independent variable and now try to obtain the energy equation in terms of capital Z get your solution in terms of capital Z and if you know how Z varies you know how your temperature varies right. So this is not this is not so trivial you will actually end up with uh, lots of so essentially what you have to go through is like if you now want to say dou by dou Z then that is that that's actually dou by dou Z plus dou by capital dou capital Z by dou small Z times dou small Z and so on. So you, change, you have to apply chain rule across and you have to bring in the dependence on capital Z everywhere uh, by, by, by chain rule and then you plug this in these equations and this actually becomes a fairly huge term because of this and you will have lots of cross derivatives and so on and then you could make now an approximation you could make an approximation whereby you say gradients that are perpendicular to the flame are important gradients that are tangential to the flame are unimportant. This is typically valid whenever you have a flame sheet kind of situation right and you can now throw away a lot of terms and to leading order you can even throw away terms that are there in other derivatives except these and finally what you will get is. Um, so neglect tangential gradients gradients and uh, you will now get something like rho chi divided by 2 do square t by do capital Z square equal to minus 1 over C p sigma k equals 1 to n delta hf not k wk where where chi is 2 d um, do z by do do uh, do z the whole square okay in general in 3d you could actually have this as a gradient squared gradient z squared and uh, this would basically call be called what, what, what this is basically what is called as a scalar dissipation rate and this is essentially looking like a diffusion term in fact the scalar dissipation rate has um, dimensions of 1 over time and essentially it gives a, 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 a um, it gives a characteristic diffusion time scale right and uh, basically it, it, it tells us how the diffusion happens z mixed z is mixed a fraction keep that in mind and you now have the gradient coming in picture that means essentially represents the transport phenomenon of mixing how the how the mixed fraction variable is now going to decay because of diffusion right because while the mixing happens between fuel and oxidizer and uh, this is actually quite important in turbulent diffusion wherever you are looking at for example um, scalar um, transport by turbulence then you have the turbulent diffusion mass diffusion coming into picture and the scalar dissipation rate uh, in under turbulent conditions would be would be quite uh, important quantity there but at the moment let us not worry about all those things and the point I wanted to make is it looks like you have a diffusion term and a reactive term and the, the, the uh, effect of this would be to try to uh, find out what goes on in between in a very narrow region in this in the z space where things are varying due to finite rate chemistry and that is the effect of this okay 
and what you will find is in reality you do not really have the oxidizer concentration come all the way down to 0 it could leak across the, the, the reaction zone if you now take finite rate chemistry into account because it is not able to consume all the oxygen right it is not really infinite rate reaction now and then it will look like this is like a essentially a, a diffusive reactive valence that we saw for the reaction zone in the pre premix flame and I also pointed out that this region is going to be like the reaction zone in the premix flame and whatever is outside of this in the near vicinity is going to be like the preheat zone in terms of transport processes dominating except it is going to be radial transport versus axial convection and so on in the Berkshuman problem or any uh, co-flow diffusion flame problem like jet diffusion flames and so on except this is not really a diffusion term alone you have it actually as a function of as a, as a second derivative of capital Z which is the mixture fraction so this is a derivative in the mixture fraction space so it is a transformation that con contains within it convection as well as diffusion but by making this transformation in terms of the mixture fraction we have essentially enabled it to look like a reactive diffusive balance all right but but the transformation contains in it the convective and the diffusive effects so we would like to stop here uh, and then we can pick up on uh, let us say droplet combustion from next class. Mm -hmm.